Welcome back to another episode of Open at Microsoft. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Radius, a brand new open source project that aims to solve cloud native application development for developers and operators. Stay tuned. All right, welcome in. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Radius, a new open source application platform. I'm joined by Ryan Nowak, the architect and creator of Radius. Uh, welcome in, Ryan. Thank you, Aaron. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about Radius and some of the problems it tries to solve? Sure. So Radius is a new open source uh, project uh, that we started here at Microsoft. And what we're trying to do in Radius is we're trying to make cloud native application deployment better. Uh, and better both for developers that write the applications and the platform engineers and IT pros that support them. Oh, that's awesome. Now, when you mention applications, like briefly, like what types of applications uh, are we targeting with uh, for those teams? Uh, we think Radius is good for any kind of application that users would deploy to a container or to to the cloud today, and that could be your basic web app, you know, with a database, or it could be a complex microservices type application. Awesome. Now, and then you mentioned with like teams of developers and operators with a lot of like handoff and uh, collaboration there. How does Radius fit into those workflows? Yeah, this is a this is a big focus for us, trying to make the collaboration better between uh, platform engineers and developers. And some of the ways that we do that is one for developers, we give them kind of a simplified abstraction to the cloud. So they have to they get to talk about what they need and what makes up the application without necessarily talking about what infrastructure to provision or how to configure it. Um, secondly, for the platform engineers and operators in the house, it's their job to configure the environments that the applications are going to get deployed into. Part of that is configuring the recipes that are used to create infrastructure. So uh, IT folks and policy experts get to have control over how the infrastructure is configured, and developers get to have a self-serve experience. We'll see more later in the demo. The third thing is, because Radius is deploying the app, we catalog all of the infrastructure as part of a, a piece of data that we call the application graph. And the goal of that is to give the whole organization a shared picture of the architecture and the infrastructure that makes up the app. Very interesting. Now, you mentioned a demo. I'd love to dive in and take a look. And uh, let's take a look at some Radius code. All right, let's go to the demo. So first of all, I'm going to go to the console. And I'm going to kind of play both roles during this demo. Aaron's going to ask me some questions and keep me honest, I hope. Um, but what we're going to start off as a developer, and then we're going to go to production a little bit later. So this is kind of how we get started as a developer. So the first thing that I might do is, here on the console, run rad init. And rad init is kind of how you set up Radius. Um, I'm in the directory where the application already is, so I'm going to say yes. And uh, I've, I've actually already set up my demo, which is why this went so fast. It's not normally going to go quite so fast as this, but everything's already set up here. And let's jump to the editor and take a look at what an application uh, looks like in Radius. And so I just want to show you real quick, this is an application that I've already built and containerized. It's a node-based uh, TypeScript to-do application. I think it's traditional to-do to-do, and I'm a big fan of TypeScript, so, so this is what we have for the demo. And I just want to point out that like this is an app that I already built and containerized. I think it's good to start with an existing app when we talk about Radius, because Radius isn't asking you to change how you write application code, how you build and publish apps, how you containerize. We work with the way you're doing all those things today. That's awesome. So I, on a previous episode of Open at Microsoft, we were chatting a little bit about Dapper. Um, does Dapper fit in with Radius and can be part of the app? Oh, man. Dapper is an awesome fit for Radius. So we've got great support for Radius built into Dapper. And the hope is that you, know, you could kind of think about Dapper as providing a lot of value to you when you're writing your code and thinking about how your application behaves. And we hope that Radius provides the same level of value to you when you're thinking about how your application gets deployed and how the cloud resources get configured. So I think the two are awesome together. Maybe we'll come back and do another session on that another time. Sounds great. So let me talk about what you're seeing here. Again, we said we're starting with an application. And, and I've kind of already wired this up to the image that I'm going to use. Mm -hmm. um, this is pretty similar to the output that, ra that rad init is going to scaffold for you when you run rad init. But I've customized it a little bit. And, and we're not going to get super deep into this in this in this talk, but this is a bicep infrastructure as code language. It's an open source infrastructure as code language that we're developing here at Microsoft. And the Radius team, uh, we've taken bicep and we've kind of added Radius to it, as well as some other surprises. So you can kind of think about this as, as bicep with some additional things added to it. It's not a different language or a different tool. Mm -hmm. And so some of the things that I would highlight here is, is just kind of what's going on. So we've got an application core container, so we're deploying a container. Um, that's that's going to be the thing that's running my to-do application. We've got a, a data stores Redis cache in here. Um, and then we've got a connection between those two right mm -hmm. here. Uh, now, now, I want to talk a little bit about this data stores Redis cache. I think the container is probably stuff everybody's seen before. Um, 
But I want to talk a little bit about this Redis cache. This is going to be using what we call recipe. And so, I mean, I want you to look and, and prove to me, like, you can see that we didn't say very much here about this Redis cache that we're going to be using. Mm -hmm. We basically just said, I want one, and this is the application that it's part of. Yeah, right? I'm only saying, like, what is that, five or just a five yeah, lines it's like, or so? Of, it's like five uh, or six lines yep. uh, in this file. Um, and so we didn't say any SKUs, what cloud service to create, how to set up security, anything like that. We're really just saying, like, I want this thing. What's going to happen when we deploy to the environment that I just set up mm -hmm. is it's going to use what we call local dev recipes. And so we'll get Redis running in a container inside that Kubernetes cluster. Uh, no cloud account needed. Uh, and then we'll have some surprises later when we go to the cloud and, and we'll use different recipes in those cases. Oh, that's awesome. Um, lastly, I just want to talk about this connection here. And connections are a feature that we hope really feels like magic to people. You can kind of think of connections as the like glue these things together button. Mm -hmm. So what this is going to do is it's going to inject some settings into this container so that the code knows how to connect to that Redis. Mm -hmm. So I've already written code inside the app that reads some environment variables to get that uh, URL and hostname and port and password and all the other things we need. Um, the second thing that this does is it kind of catalogs this relationship as part of the app graph. And so you'll be able to reason about this container talks to that Redis cache. And we'll, we'll see an example of that when we deploy it. So uh, you ready to deploy this? Yeah, let's get it deployed. Let's get over to our console here. And the way that we can do this is with rad run. Uh, I'm going to rad run app.bicep. Cool. Looks like it's yeah, uh, building that app bicep file and getting it deployed. Yep. So we're deploying this, and you can see that that recipe is kind of cranking now. It's it's booting up that Redis cache. So with that local dev recipe, it sounds like you mentioned some light lightweight containerized infrastructure there. Yeah. So as part of the open source project, um, we've created recipes, and and recipes can be implemented in a variety of technologies. But we've created some recipes in bicep that just run these open source technologies on Kubernetes. So like. You mentioned Dapper earlier. Like, if you're a Dapper developer, um, you probably have gone through their quick start where you set up Redis and then you set up Dapper to talk to Redis. Like, Radius recipes that we provide just do that for you, oh, right? Cool. So that's that's really what these local dev recipes are trying to do. Not for production; it's just to get you started. Yep. Uh, so you can see that that deployed. We've got some streaming logs here from Redis. Um, we've got some streaming logs here from the app, and we've got a port forward. I'm going to open a browser real quick, and we can take a look at this website and see what we can see. So we'll go to localhost 3000. Um, on this page, you can see some of those environment variables that were set. Mm -hmm. So we're displaying like what are the settings that Radius injected into this application. And that was through right that here. connection that's doing all of that? And that's through that connection. And, and this is just a demo app. We built it to kind of talk about Radius, which we're doing right now. Yep. Um, if I flip over to the to-do list, I will uh, test this out. And we can see that that got added. Um, the one thing that I would want to check here is we should see some logs. And so you can see test this out here in the logs from Redis. So mm -hmm. this, this really worked. It made it all the way to the database. So I'm just going to cancel that and get my terminal back. Cool. So that that's a, looks like a really easy way to get up and running with local development with Radius. Now, when you were starting to think about, you mentioned with like operators setting up cloud environments, what does that look like? Yeah. So let's, let's go through and, and talk about kind of what that process looks like to set up a cloud environment. And I think one of the most important things to kind of understand in this, in this space is recipes. Um, so let me show you some example recipes. Awesome. So here, I'm going to do an Azure example first, because I think this one's a little bit simpler. And I've just got these in this folder. This, this is actually going to come from a container registry when we use it. It's just in the folder, so we can kind of talk about it. Mm -hmm. And so if you look at what's going on in this recipe, there's really three things. Um, you get some data from Radius. Mm -hmm. You use that data to create a resource. In this case, we're creating a Microsoft cache, which is the hosted Redis on Azure. Mm -hmm. And then you return some data to Radius. So you're going to return the information that powers that connections experience. Um, and, and this is important because we know that IT professionals and platform engineers and cloud compliance security experts, like they understand these settings really well, right? And, and your organization might have specific settings that you want to set, specific policies that you need to enforce. Um, and this is the place for that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that's really powerful about environments and recipes is well, the people who set up the environment get to control what the developers can create and what they can do and how it's oh, configured. Yeah. And, and those people don't even need access. So the administrator sets up the environment, they add the recipes, and then when the developers use it, they only need access to the environment. They don't need access to the underlying cloud accounts. 
That's awesome. And then those templates, uh, we're looking at a bicep example here. Now, if I have some existing maybe Terraform templates or things like that, can I start to use other languages for recipes? Oh, man, that's a great question. And I don't know if it was prompted by this folder, but <laughs> here, here's an example of a Terraform recipe. And again, kind of same anatomy, right? You get some data from Radius, you create the resources you want, and then you output some data to, Re to Radius. And in Terraform, it's kind of conventional to spread these things out over files. So you can see the output there and the variables there. In this file, what we're doing is we're actually using a module from the Terraform public module registry. Mm -hmm. And I think this is interesting because when we've talked to people who use Terraform, they are always saying, well, we actually have a big library of Terraform stuff we've already done. And can we use that with Radius? And the answer is it's really easy to turn those things into a recipe and use them with Radius. If you have existing modules, you just write a new module that calls that one, and now it's a recipe. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to see. Can we uh, kick off a couple deployments and see these in action? I want to. I want to talk a little bit oh. about. Let's let's register one of these. I'm not oh, actually yeah. going to run it, but I'll kind of show you the process. So perfect. The first the first thing you would do is you'd publish that recipe. So if this were the bicep recipe that I showed you, you would run something like this: rad recipe pub publish, or rad bicep publish, right? Mm -hmm. Bicep publish. So you'd run something like this command it says. Hey, I'm going to take that local file and I'm going to push this into an OCI registry. Oh, gotcha. Terraform's got its own publishing stuff as well. There's a bunch of places you can publish Terraform, but the point is you put it somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to run this rad recipe register command. And that's a lot to read, so I'll explain it. But what we're doing is we're saying basically in the environment that I specify, this recipe is the default for Redis. Mm -hmm. So when developers ask for Redis, it's going to execute this code to give it to them. So they, like with a default recipe, then they don't have to worry at all about infrastructure. It's just no. let the environment choose for me. Exactly. It looks it looks like what we saw earlier, right? It's it's only a couple lines, and they don't they don't really have to specify anything about the configuration. Just hey, this app needs Redis, and it's going to happen. Oh, cool. So shall we go to the cloud? Yeah, let's give it a shot. So we've got another tab here, and in this, um, I've got queued up a deployment to both Azure and AWS. So in the background, I've configured those environments uh, before I walked in here today, and I've registered those recipes with those environments. So we'll go ahead and kick off this deploy. Now, you're not seeing this happen in real time. I think it could be a very long, boring video if you were. Um, we actually pre-deployed these applications, so the cloud resources are already provisioned and stood up. Otherwise, we'd be waiting around. So we should see these complete maybe you know, 20 or 30 seconds. Yep. And then this app.bicep, this is the same exact app we deployed lo in local yeah. development. No changes at all? Yeah, think about what we didn't do, right? Mm -hmm. So we're deploying to both Azure and AWS at the same time, and we just ran on a local Kubernetes cluster on my machine. We didn't make any changes to any of the code, any of the deployment manifests. It's all, it's all just what is the configuration in there. Uh, yeah, that seems extremely powerful, especially not just from like local development into maybe testing or pre-production or yes. production, but also now you're like Azure and AWS. Yeah, and we know and we know that it's pretty rare from the conversations we had with cloud customers. We know that it's pretty rare for somebody to deploy the same application across multiple clouds. Mm -hmm. But I think what we're really trying to do, we, we do help those people. I think Radius does help those people quite a lot, even though they're they're kind of a small group with very specific needs. Um, but we do make it really easy for you to go from testing to production on whichever cloud you're using. And if you're a platform engineer that you have to support multiple clouds in your organization, well, we really hope that we're making your job easier with Radius. Cool. So it looks like those are deployed. Um, and you mentioned a little bit about the application graph. Now, how can we uh, take a look at uh, the app yeah. graph? Let me bring that up. So let's do rad app graph. And we'll do AWS on this side, because this is where we did AWS before. And we'll do Azure on this side, rad app graph. And I'll just edit this to say Azure. So you can see that that already came back. And we'll just get the results for Azure. And we're seeing this for the first time, so I'm going to kind of talk through it. There's a lot of output here. Um, you can see that we're here for application demo. And then inside application demo, there was the demo container. I'm, I'm really creative with naming, as you can see. Um, there's the DB, Redis Cache. Again, super creative name. Um, and you can see that we've got the connection between the two. So Radius remembered that connection. Mm -hmm. um, and then what's, what's going on with this resources section is you're seeing, like, what are the things that came out of this? Or, like, what did Radius create uh, as a result? So all of this stuff is Kubernetes stuff. Uh, if you wanted to, we could get kubectl out and kind of poke around at it. It's not that interesting. Um, but down here, we see we've got an Azure Redis cache here. Oh, yeah. And we could we could even open the portal and go look at the specific one if we wanted to. Um, over here, you can see that the picture is mostly the same. 
except we got some AWS services. So we got an yeah. AWS memory DB, which is one of their ways to run Redis on AWS. And this is pretty cool because we had two environments with two different recipes, and we got two totally different hosting models for the same technology as a result. That is super cool. And it sounds like from recipes to app graph to Dapper, it sounds like we actually have a series ahead of us of uh, yeah. some more Radius videos to Let's do. Let's hope so. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Uh, we took a look at Radius, a new open source project that aims to solve uh, cloud native applications across local dev cloud. Uh, where can we go to learn more, Ryan? Yeah. So the best place to learn more about Radius, I'm just going to bring this up, uh, would be to go to our website at radapp.io. Uh, and this will tell you a lot about the project. And then um, because it's an open source project, you can find GitHub here. You can find docs here. You can find more information about some of our community meetings. We have a community call coming up as, as well. Well, we have community calls every month as well as we have a Discord where we talk about Radius and answer people's questions. So we'd love for you to come hang out with us and hear your feedback. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. And we'll uh, have you back next time for the next episode of Open at Microsoft. Glad to be here. Thanks. Thanks.